So this is just gonna be a quick little video on this fourth generation iPod. So I have had this on my shelf for several years. I believe a, a friend slash viewer by the name of Ethan Jenkins sent me this iPod, like I think in 2014 or 2015, right when I was like starting to collect Apple products. And he sent it to me and it obviously didn't work. So I would plug it in and it would say that the hard drive was dead. Like it had the little um, exclamation point you know, with the sad iPod or whatever. And so I, I never really bothered on fixing it just because, you know, it's an old iPod. I didn't really care at the time. However, uh, my friend Chris has actually been getting into iPods and, and so has my other friend Noah. So it kind of gave me some incentive to try and mess with this thing again. And so I ended up opening it and that's kind of why it's in two pieces here. This is the original uh, HP iPod, <laughs> which is basically just a regular fourth generation non-photo iPod that was distributed through HP. And the interesting thing about these is if you needed support or help for your iPod, you actually had to contact HP, not Apple, because I believe these were only sold through HP. It's a very, very weird partnership, and I don't think that'll be happening again in the uh, tech world. But uh, it's a 20 gigabyte, this one is, and as you can see, the back is like really messed up. I believe someone, aka not me, decided to try and sand it down and give it like a brushed aluminum look, but I mean, it kind of worked and it kind of didn't. But uh, the reason it is in two pieces is because I decided to uh, open it up and kind of see what was wrong with it. And originally, I just, I, I just assumed that the iPod was completely bad or the uh, hard drive rather. And so what I did was I just went on eBay and I ordered a new battery, a hard drive, and I was planning on flash modding it, but that may not be happening anymore. Now, I just said that I thought the hard drive was dead. Well, turns out somehow after I replaced the battery and plugged it back in, I decided to boot it up just for giggles and the thing works. So it, it booted right up. It had, you know, some music on it, not a lot, but uh, yeah, I can actually demo that right now actually. Go ahead and do that. So as you can see, when plugged into power, now it boots up just fine. So for some reason, the actual hard drive was actually not dead. I guess it was just had a bad connection or something like that. And so I guess me taking it out and putting it back in fixed it. So as you can see, it's working. Now the only problem is, is that lock button is on, of course. And normally you would think, well, just, just plug this in and switch the hold switch. Only the problem is, is it broke. So in the process of me trying to troubleshoot some things on this thing, uh, I was disconnecting and connecting this a few times. And the last time that I tried to do it, it just sheared, sheared the connector right off. And so pretty much it, the iPod is now stuck in the locked position. I can't do anything on it, of course, because of that. And so I had to order a new headphone jack board for it. And the reason I was doing messing with it is because there's only sound coming out out of one channel on the headphone jack and I was trying to take this off and try to clean it with alcohol and do that to try and fix it. But anyways, um, long story short, I am waiting for this new board piece right here to come in and then I can finally slap this thing together because it is kind of cumbersome to use while the hard drive is falling out of the back of it. But anyways, that's just a little uh, thing on my iPod. I'll probably make another clip when I get it back together tomorrow so you can actually see that it works. But for now, that's all you got. All right, so I finally have an update for you two days later. So <laughs> despite my couple of packages I was expecting for this thing being in limbo, uh, they both actually showed up. So first off, I'll show you guys the setup for the flash mod that I have originally planned to do. So here we have an iFlash CF adapter here. That's this board. And then this is the adapter cable to make it work with the fourth gen iPod. And then we also have a CF to SD card adapter. And these foam pads are just to kind of hold everything in when you close the iPod up. But basically I just have a 64 gig SD card in there. And I already went ahead and plugged everything in and make, made sure it worked. Went ahead and did a restore and all that good stuff. Uh, I was just waiting on this headphone piece right here. Now, originally, I thought I had just bought this part right here, but they actually sent me an entire new back cover. And the great thing is, is not only is it still an HP iPod, but it's in a lot better condition. So you can see here's the new one, and then here's the one I already had. You can see the one that I had, I mean, obviously this is still pretty scratched up, but the one I had was definitely way worse condition-wise. So I'm just gonna slap this whole thing together 
and call it a day. So let me see if I can do that real quick and then I'll go ahead and demo the iPod. All right, y'all. Well, it was a pretty tight fit and the back might be a little bit bowed out. I'm not sure, but because it does rock a little bit on the table, but uh, it was a lot of components to get in there. So anyways, the result of all this effort is a fully working iPod. So that's pretty dope. Um, I guess this one rocks a little bit on the table too. But anyways, yeah, it was a challenge getting all that stuff to fit in here, um, just given the size of everything, but it's working now. So I can go ahead and turn on the backlight. As you can see, we are working. Uh, let me go ahead into the settings. And as you can see, we have 59 gigabytes of available space, which is a great, a lot better than the, uh, uh, the 20 gigs that we originally had versus that hard drive. So I can fit pretty much my entire music library on here if I wanted to. So there's that. Of course, the click wheel and everything is working. I uh, go ahead and set the backlight timer, Let's set it to 20 seconds. There we go. But anyways, yeah, everything is working. And as you can see, I guess there's a little speaker in there too, which didn't seem to work before. So that's pretty sweet. So yeah, guys, that is finally, after about a week and a half of buying parts and assembling stuff and making it work, we have a fully working iPod, presumably. I do have to test this headphone port, but I'm, I'm fairly confident that it does work. So yeah, that's just a little video on my resto mod of this fourth generation iPod. And yeah, see you guys later.